Legend has it that the name for this dessert came from a cry of amazement from a boy at the sight of this gold-colored cake. It stems from a tradition of women meeting on Christmas Eve to bake together. This sweet cake resembles a Christmas star guiding the Magi to the birth of Jesus. Even the box it comes in can be used as a toy. We're exploring the history and origins of Pandoro. I'm your host, Glenn Warren, and welcome to another serving of Seasons Eatings, the podcast which explores the history and origins of your favorite Christmas foods. Seasons Eatings can be found wherever you download your favorite podcasts. Seasons Eatings is also found on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you love the show, then I humbly ask you to share this podcast with some you think would love to hear more about the history of Christmas and the foods which shape the holiday we love so much. If you want to give me suggestions for future episodes, just email me at seasonseatingspodcast at gmail.com. All the links can be found in the show notes at seasonseatingspodcast.com. At Christmas time in Italy, it's almost impossible not to find Pandoro on every table. However, not everyone knows that it should be warmed slightly before serving to best enjoy its delicate flavor. A few seconds in the oven or a few minutes in front of a lit fireplace are enough to allow the sugar covering the cake to melt. Pandoro is a traditional Italian sweetbread, most popular around Christmas and New Year. Typically a product of Verona, Pandoro traditionally has an eight-pointed shape. I've talked about the cousin of Pandoro, the other Christmas Italian dessert, panettone, on a previous episode. Pandoro and panettone share the same two distinctions. They both appear in shops and on tables all over Italy during the Christmas season, and their preparation is anything but simple and quick. The Pandora recipe and that of panettone have some ingredients in common, such as a sourdough, eggs, and butter, but the similarities stop there. The main difference between Pandoro and Panettone lies in the shape. An eight-pointed star for the former and a cylinder with a dome top for the latter. And in their defining flavors, the Pandoro is presented in all its simplicity, covered with a dusting of icing sugar, while the Panettone is enriched with candied fruit and sultanas, depending on the recipe but also with chocolate chips in more modern variants. The dough of a panettone has has a denser consistency compared to the more honeycombed and lighter texture of Pandoro. The difference in composition also results in a difference in the aroma that these two cakes give off when cut. Panettone, in fact, produces an aroma enhanced by the sweet and sour notes of candied fruit and sultanas, while the Pandoro exudes a sweet scent of butter and vanilla. Pandoro appeared in remote times, the product of bread making, as the name Pandoro, literally meaning golden bread, suggests. Throughout the Middle Ages, white bread was consumed solely by the rich, while the common people ate a darker whole wheat bread or a black bread. Sweetbreads were reserved for the nobility. Bread enriched with eggs, butter, sugar, or honey as a sweetener were served in their palaces and known as royal bread or golden bread. There are a number of theories as to the origins of what we know today as Pandoro. Some say the famous Christmas cake derives from a French brioche or was perhaps a pastry introduced to the city during the Habsburg presence. 
In particular, the name might just be a reference to subtle layers of gold leaf which decorated a cake reserved for banquets in Verona during the reign of the Republic of Venice. They could all be true, but the precursor is most definitely a local sponge cake popular in the city for centuries. The Pandoro made today, though, originates in Verona and is thought to have evolved from a traditional Veronese Christmas cake called a Nataline, invented in the 13th century to celebrate the first Christmas under the, in the city under the rule of the Scala family. Nataline was a flat cake with a crust of granulated sugar, marsala wine, almonds, and pine nuts, but its star shape, said to represent the comet that guided the Magi to Bethlehem, is thought to have been the inspiration for the shape of Pandoro. But the origin of the modern Pandoro we know now is famously documented. The desserts consumed in the 17th century were described in the book Soro Celeste Galilee, Letters to Her Father, published by La Rosa of Turin, and they included royal bread made from flour, sugar, butter, and eggs. However, this bread is already known and appreciated in ancient Rome of Pliny the Elder in the first century. That bread was made with the finest flour combined with eggs, butter, and oil. Virgil and Levy mention the preparation under the name Libum. Modern Pandoro came about in the late 1800s, when the Kingdom of Italy granted Domenico Malagati, a local patissiere, a three-year exclusivity to produce a special cake with the name Pandoro. The Arena, the local newspaper of Verona, on the 21st of March in 1894, six months before the patent of the cake, published an advertisement announcing the new product. The article said, The Malagati pastry chef warns his numerous and benevolent customers that he has prepared a delicious new dessert, light, inalterable, and beautifully shaped. The author deems it worthy of the first place naming it Pandoro. Regarding this announcement by the arena, it's interesting to note that the name of the product was not yet the definitive one. In fact, it was written as three separate words. The final name of Pandora was first attested in the October patent. Pandora immediately had a large group of imitators. On May 24, 1896, Candala Scala, the satirical newspaper of the city, published a caricature of Domenico Malagati, accompanied by a quatrain in rhyme, stating that Malagati wanting to imitate all the bread makers in the city. Malagati probably had a certain theatrical taste and inclination for public relations, and for this reason decided to take advantage of the favorable moment by launching an unusual challenge he invited the pastry chefs who made a dessert similar to his to divulge the true recipe of Pandoro. Receiving the sum of 1,000 lira as a prize, Malagati won the challenge. Nobody showed up. Pandora, as we know it today, made its official debut on October 14, 1884 when the baker and the patissier Domenico Malagati demanded a patent for a fluffy and sweet yeast bread, whose typical shape of a frustrum of an eight-pointed star section was designed by neo-impressionist painter Angelo da Locca Bianca. He trademarked the famous eight-point star cake in 1884, and his bread of gold became immediately popular with rich Venetians. According to the family legend, while he was experimenting with the new star mold, a passerby in front of the first slice of the new dessert, illuminated by a ray of sunshine, exclaimed in amazement, Le proprio un pandoro! It really is a golden bread! Despite recent difficulties and stiff competition from another baker, Bali, the Melagati brand has made this classic of Christmas cakes 
without interruption in Verona from that very date. Look closely and you will see 1894 on every confection. More importantly, the mother yeast, which historically links all the Pandora made in over a century and which gives each one that unique flavor and consistency, is still jealously preserved. We'll learn about the other companies and the city the Pandora comes from after the break. Hello, this is Art from A Cozy Christmas Podcast. We're the podcast that explores the coziest stories and memories of Christmas. Join me as I invite you to listen in as I read some of the classic stories of Christmas. Stories like The Gift of the Magi or A Christmas Carol, among many others you may not have heard of before. Sometimes I'll have a guest on and we'll talk about Christmas and the stories that matter to them like the stories of their favorite Christmas memories and traditions. Sometimes I'm joined by my favorite co-host, my daughter Grace, and we'll talk about and try different Christmas foods, play games, or chat about our favorite Christmas movies and traditions. And also teddy bears. So come on in, make yourself at home, and enjoy all the cozy Christmas stories and more heard here at the Cozy Christmas Podcast. You can find out more at www.cozychristmaspodcast.com. It's Christmas! Hello, this is Adam from Merry Britsmas. I am a Christmas fanatic from the UK who thinks that the world needs to know more about the traditions, telly and music that helps make a British Christmas really festive. I look at everything from mince pies, to Boxing Day, to Wham, to Slade, to the Royal Family, to Doctor Who. If you want to find out more about a British Christmas, or you are British and want a hit of nostalgia, check me out at Merry Britsmas. And happy blooming Christmas to you and all. Today, Verona is the undisputed capital of Pandora, and homes to one of Italy's largest makers, the Bali Company. Like Bali, there are many other companies who produce Pandora, but certain rules have been laid down. Firstly, the yeast must be natural and be added to the following ingredients. Wheat flour, sugar, category A fresh chicken eggs, vanilla essence, no less than 20% butter, and 4% egg yolks and salt. A good Pandora will have three stages of proofing and enjoy 38 hours of work to produce the final product with its iconic truncated octagonal star shape. The crust must be uniform with a soft and silky texture. Like all of the critical leavened products, Pandora is a cake that exudes patience, care, attention, and a maniacal choice of ingredients set by a rigorous discipline. The making of this cake requires a double dough, alternating by long leavening times. Its softness is given by the long mixing process of the flour with the eggs, then incorporates the air little by little, making the mixture swollen and smooth. On the other hand, the addition of butter gives the cake its fatness, which tends to melt in the mouth. Finally, orange and vanilla or lemon zest are the essential touches to provide it with an unmistakable aroma and scent. Unlike its rival, Panettone, and its many variants, Pandoro has maintained its original recipe over the years. The first citation of the dessert clearly identified as Pandora dates to the 18th century, The dessert certainly figured in the cuisine of the Venetian aristocracy. Venice was the principal market for spices as late as the 18th century, as well as for the sugar that had then been replacing honey in the European pastries and bread made from leavened dough. It was at Verona in Venetian territory that the formula for making Pandoro was developed and perfected. 
a process that required a century. The modern history of this dessert began on October 30, 1894, when Domenico Malagati obtained his patent for a procedure to be applied by producing Pantoro industrially. An interesting fact about the history of Pandoro is linked to the patent of Malagati, who decided to make use of the talent of the Impressionist painter. The traditional eight-pointed star for the cake has become a symbol of Christmas in Italy. It comes actually from a drawing by the Viennese artist. Malagati performed a Pandora company in 1896 and actually survived bankruptcy in 2017. Verona is also the city where Shakespeare placed his star-crossed lovers, Romeo and Juliet. Walk along the charming streets of Verona during the Christmas season, and you'll see pretty violet and pink boxes of Pandoro displayed throughout the town in all kinds of unlikely shop windows, including bookstores and clothing emporiums and gift boutiques, where the delicate colors of the package chosen in honor of Juliet? Actually, no. Bali's founder, Ruggiero Bali, had three older sons working in different parts of the business, two in production and one as a lawyer. Out of fairness, he assigned his only daughter, then just a youngster, the critical task of deciding Pandora's packaging colors. Pandora is sold in a distinctive lampshade-shaped box that Italian children love to play with once the cake has been eaten. These sturdy boxes are recycled to create homemade helmets, carnival masks, tunnels for toy trucks and cars, and even mini basketball hoops. And in Italy, there are countless ways to serve this versatile cake. Pandora is often served cut in horizontal slices that are restacked to resemble a Christmas tree. It then can be decorated with a simple dusting of confectioner's sugar or each layer can be spread with whipped sweet marscapone cheese or pastry cream and jams or zagabrioni. And just like a gingerbread house, it can be embellished with festive edible embellishments including mint leaves, candied cherries, tiny candies, sprinkles or crushed candy canes. And thanks to the natural yeast used in making Pandoro, it lasts more than six months without refrigeration. Italian home cooks often substitute sliced pandoro instead of the usual pan di spanga or sponge cake or ladyfinger cookies in recipes like zuppa inglese, tiramisu or zucotto. Dolce a pandoro is a specialty of Michelin star Twelve Apostoli, one of Verona's most famous restaurants. Created by their charming owner Giorgio Gioco, it features slices of pandoro laid with creamy zagabrioni, saved chocolate, and nuts. The famous American singer and actress Barbara Streisand said during a TV interview in Italy that it was the best dessert she had ever tasted in her life. And while there are many different ways to enjoy this dessert, many Italians would tell you there's only one true way to prepare it. When you purchase a pandoro inside the box, with the dessert will be a plastic bag and a small packet of icing sugar. You place the pandoro inside the bag, add the powdered sugar, and gather the top of the bag so there's a little air left in it. Then you shake the bag carefully and cover the pandoro completely with the sugar. Now, don't let other people tell you that to slice the pandoro and sprinkle the powdered sugar on top. That is not the traditional way. It will be quite the spectacle for the family to see you shake the bag and produce a dessert that looks like it was covered in a fresh blanket of snow. However you serve your Prandero, just remember you are continuing a 150-year tradition every Christmas season. I'm your host, Glenn Warren, and thank you for listening to this serving of Seasons Eatings. Seasons Eatings is available wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Please, if you can leave a review about the show so we can spread the Christmas cheer. 
And if you let me know you've left a review, I'll send you a Seasons Eating sticker as a personal thank you. Also, I would love to hear from you. So send me an email at seasonseatingspodcast at gmail.com and let me know how you like the show, suggestions for future episodes, or just to say hi. I know we all get busy. So even sharing the podcast with someone you know who loves Christmas would be a great help. And if you're feeling extra generous this season, you can buy me an eggnog. Head on over to seasonseatingspodcast.com and click on the little cup in the corner. Each small donation helps with the daily running of the podcast and is greatly appreciated. Season Eatings has great items for you or your loved ones this holiday season. So head on over to seasonseatings.com, click on the merchandise tab to find your next great gift. Thank you for listening and tune in again for another serving of Season's Eatings. All music for Season's Eatings is under the Creative Commons license.